Welcome to Independence, the FIEC podcast. Uh, my name's Phil Topham, Executive Director of the FIEC. Uh, I'm delighted to be joined for this bonus uh, episode uh, by Ian Williamson, who's a, also an Executive Director of Medhurst Ministries. Uh, hi, Ian. Good yeah. afternoon. Uh, and with Nathan Young as well. Nathan, your pastor at New Life Church in Middlesbrough, Ian's successor at the church up there in Middlesbrough. <laughs> That's right, isn't it? I, I don't think... Well, yeah, that word successor has the word success in, which I'm, <laughs> I'm reluctant to stay away from that, but yeah. <laughs> he prefers the term palmed off on. Okay, fine. <laughs> well, at least we've ironed that out. Excellent. Uh, brothers, I, I did a, a podcast uh, with, with Ian on another occasion just about the work and ministry on council estates. Uh, and that's why I want to talk about Medhurst Ministries for a few minutes with you. Um, so just tell us a bit about what Medhurst Ministries is, Ian, uh, and what it's been set up to do. Yeah, basically, it's a ripoff of 20 schemes. So, oh, well, that's it then. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks for joining us. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> See you next week. <clears throat> yeah, basically, what happened was a few years ago, we saw the work that was happening in Scotland through 20 schemes, mm. uh, planting and equipping churches and gospel workers on, on housing estates. And we were desperate for something uh, like that to, to happen in the UK. Um, and then thought, well, no one else is going to do it, so why don't we mm. do it? So me and Nathan had an idea of running it as a ministry in New Life Church, which we started to do. But then came the issue of how could we support other churches in different contexts? How would that look fair if we were receiving money? How uh, We were just concerned about transparency. Mm. Uh, so going against everything I believe about parachurch organisations, I decided to set one up. <laughs> <laughs> but but, it, but it's, its aim is to help the local church. That's what a good parachurch should do, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, so what we've done is we, we, we have got a board of directors which consists of pastors of local council estate churches as mm. well. So what we wanted to do was have a, uh, a number of people who had experience of doing this type of ministry, uh, who could not only just offer transparency and, and, and direction and, and, and keep me accountable, but also could benefit from it as well. So uh, we've got people like Steve Neal in Oldham. Uh, we've got uh, Graham Thompson in Cleck Eaton. So uh, it's a mixture of pastors. I think all of them are pastors from FIEC churches. Mm. And we just wanted something that would appeal to funders. A lot of people were saying to me, we understand there's a problem. The churches aren't being resourced in areas of deprivation. We'd like the help, but we don't know where to start. Can you give us any direction? Mm. So we thought through Medhurst Ministry, we could be a, a, a point of call for people who would like to fund or work with or pray for that they could, um, we could provide a network of churches that people could find independently that can look on our website and find the churches who were partnered with us and contact them independently or then come direct to us and uh, support us and then we will uh, through the board of directors uh, make sure that that funding or the people or the training will get to where it's needed most so it's based on uh, three things basically to be part of the Medhurst network you must be in an area of deprivation now that doesn't mean you should be on a council estate you mm. could be in a village and serve in a village where just a few households uh, yeah. are in, but you need to be reaching those people so um, you need to be in an area of deprivation. Uh, you need to be uh, basically in agreement with our statement of faith, mm. which is pretty much like the generic copy of what we find yeah, on yeah, the FIEC yeah. website. And again, you, 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 you're not there just to receive. You want to uh, not only benefit from Medhurst, but to serve it. So what we do is we have peer-to-peer -peer mentors. We, uh, we have weekenders where we encourage network members to come and preach and speak at these conferences as well. So we, we don't just want to be... A funding agency, I mentioned before on a previous podcast, we, we talk about gospel partnerships where we don't want donors and receivers. We want people who are uh, serving one another mm. for the benefit of the kingdom of God. So tell us about the first weekend, Nathan, that happened at New Life at your church. Mm. Uh, I think it was last month. Uh, just yeah. talk to us a bit about like, the guys who came along, girls who came along, kind of what the spirit was like uh, and, and how encouraged you were by that. Yeah, I, I was massively encouraged by it. Um, I think we had about 100 people. Uh, there and it was a good mix I think of people mm. who we've been partnering with for a while uh, but also some people who are just keen to get involved you know just kind of test the water find out um, you know whether Medhurst Ministries could be beneficial for the ministry that they're involved in um, and and as well we had some people who kind of aren't involved in 
churches in deprived communities as well, but, you know, partners and, uh, and supporters and so on who are just interested to, to find out more about how they can work alongside us too. So yeah, really encouraging to see churches kind of coming together. I, I think, I think it was encouraging for, for us having so many people kind of come to Middlesbrough um, and kind of think through some of the things about how we can um, operate. But I think it's just encouraging for everybody who's, who's there because, you know, a lot of us were involved in small churches or, you know, church plants, revitalizations. It's often difficult work and, and we just need that encouragement um, of, of gathering together and um, it can often be quite isolating. So just having that encouragement, like Ian saying, it's, you know, it's not just a funding organization, but actually we could see that at the weekender was actually, it's that peer to peer partnership that's really important. So it's, it's external partnerships, but also internal partnerships. Mm. And and that's really a key thing that we need is churches supporting one another. Uh, and so just something as simple as, as, you know, putting on that weekend, uh, mm. just a conference, um, you know, just say, I'll oh, come to Middlesbrough, <laughs> um, you know, sort out your own accommodation and travel you know, we'll have this conference on the Friday evening during the Saturday, people come along, but it's, it's not, it's a simple thing, isn't it? And yeah, actually, I think it's a real encouragement to everybody who came along. I I hate the term networking, Mm. but but it was great for that, wasn't it? Just people doing this ministry in similar communities, being able to talk to one another, gather together, encourage one another. That was the thing I really took away from it. You had guys from all different parts of the UK, really, um, some in kind of town centres, others on council estates, others who were um, starting new plants and and works in places where there were no gospel witness. That is just really encouraging, isn't it? That partnership. And Nathan, let me just ask you specifically, you you don't sound like you're from Middlesbrough originally. (laughs) (laughs) So so, so you're a great story of the kind of partnership that can lead to serving in a community like where New Life is is located. Just tell us a bit about, maybe you can tell the story guys about how how you came to go to Middlesbrough and, and kind of what, what, what's gone on. Yeah, so yeah, I'm, I'm not from Middlesbrough. Uh, I've lived there almost seven years, but I've, I've avoided picking up the accent. It's, yeah, it's, it's still, still very much an outsider, <laughs> uh, as I'm seen by the people uh, of Middlesbrough. Um, so yeah, I grew up in Cheltenham, mm. uh, which is a very, kind of, very, very different place uh, to Middlesbrough. Um, but yeah, I was, I was living in Aberdeen where I'd, I'd gone to study and I was kind of looking for ministry training opportunities. Um, and I'd seen Ian had posted uh, on the FIEC website that he was, you know, looking for people to, to come to come, Middlesbrough. Come to Middlesbrough. Yeah, <laughs> come to Middlesbrough. Um, exciting opportunities here um, to, to come and serve. And it, it really was quite a miserable advert, actually, wasn't it? It was like. <laughs> what did you, know, you say? <laughs> pretty much, if you love ministry, you want to serve on a council estate, come and join us. Little fruit, little money. <laughs> <laughs> Little hope, or something like that. I can't remember. It's bleak. It's bleak. Ad- but you responded to this it was bleak so negative. Advert. And oh, yeah, yeah. And I thought, yeah, I'll, I'll go and go and give that a go. Yeah. Um, so yeah. And seven years on, you're the pastor of the church. Yeah. So I, I just never left, and now, now I'm pastoring the church. Um, but you've done, on a serious note, you've done the training there, haven't mm. you? And you, you've served with Ian. You've learned from Ian and others doing the ministry. Yeah. And I guess. That's at the heart of what Medhurst wants to see happen elsewhere, right? Yeah, definitely. For us, I think when we look back what God has done uh, through a group of people, a small group of people in a small town with no money, no congregation, very little support from elsewhere, and we see how God has has grown a church. We've got an awesome team Mm. who, who love the community, who love the Lord, and who are just so well equipped and we saw that it's been tough. I mean, I had to take two sabbaticals in a year. I was shattered. It was exhausting trying to juggle so many plates. But what we want to do is help other churches get to the position where we are at New Life Church without going through the heartache and, and, mm. and, and the struggles that we've gone through. One of the biggest things for me was struggling with isolation. Like I used to go to Scotland or to London for support and for training for people who understood the context that I was working with. That was exhausting in itself. Although I benefited, it took me a day to recover once yeah. I got back. And it was a day that I couldn't afford to give up from the ministry. Whereas if we can do things more localized, uh, that that helps pastors so much. Again, with online technology, you're just having somebody at the end of the phone or online who can uh, understand what you're going through, who can encourage you and say, look, I've been through exactly the same thing, but this is how God has enabled me. This is... Uh, 
something we can do to help you in the future. It, it just gives people light at the end of the tunnel. Again, the funding. I spent a long time building up, uh, I think, trust with, with various funders. Mm. Uh, we've got a model that works so people know that we are as safe a pair of hands as you're going to get in this type of ministry. Mm. So if we can use the contacts that we've made and, and, and build and develop on the relationships that we've got to share the resources with other churches, that will help pastors with, with people and uh, finances. And again, I think just having uh, a network that people can go to if they're looking to support uh, council estate ministry. A lot of people didn't know where to start. You'll speak to Dan Green uh, later about partnerships with New Life Church. He was desperate to support council estate ministry, but didn't know where to start, mm. where there's a go-to organisation now if you want to support churches in England, uh, where we've currently got 10 churches as part of the network. So, yeah, isolation, funding... And, and resources were some of the, the main pressures that pastors are facing on council estates. So mm. if we can just take some of that burden off so the pastors can just focus on preaching the gospel and reaching the communities, uh, hopefully that will take the pressure off uh, and people will be more encouraged to get into this type of yeah. work and stay when they feel like giving up. They'll, they'll, they've got that pressure took off them, so they're going to mm. stay in the game longer as well. Uh, Nathan, what do meaningful partnerships need to look like between churches in our places and churches in wealthier communities? Yeah, um, I, th I mean, it, it depends very much on on the churches that you're, you're looking at because no two churches in a deprived community are going to be alike. Mm. So all of us within Medhurst Ministries kind of, we're working in similar contexts, but all of us actually have different needs. So mm. some of us, you know, we're, we're desperate for money. Mm. That's, that's the need for some of us. It's the people that we really need. Um, for some, it might just be that support and, and fellowship. Um, for some, it might be some, some theological training for some, it might just be some kind of coaching in, in church planting. Um, and for most of us, it's kind of all of those things, mm. uh, that we need. So actually, it, yeah, it, it varies from, from church to church as for, for, um, you know, working with external partners. I think the main thing that I would want to say is it should be a two way street. Yeah. Um, you know, we're, we're not just talking about a kind of uh, a donor recipient relationship. If we're talking about genuine partnership, there should be some level of, of, of a two way street. Mm. So, you know, for new life church, we're only a small church. Um, we're, we're tiny. And yet, I mean, you, yeah, you're going to have your conversation with, with Dan mm. about the, the partnership with Banstead. And yet it's not just been a case of them supporting us. We've been able to help them. So we've been able to, to send people to, to them to help where they've you know done a, a holiday Bible club yeah. and that sort of thing. Um, so actually partnership should be, should be both ways. I think, um, I think that's how we need to start thinking about church partnerships. Uh, and we'll pick that up with Dan in, in another episode, which would be, be great to, to have that conversation. Just as we bring this into land, Ian, what can FIEC and FIEC churches do to support the work and ministry of Medhurst reaching these deprived communities that you've been talking about? First of all, promote us, uh, follow us on social media, uh, share with other pastors or people who are interested in this type of work. Consider sending uh, members to join our churches, mm. uh, to come and do internships or or even uh, come and train with us for gospel ministry. Uh, you can support us financially by, by giving to us. Obviously, that is a, is a huge need is finances. Uh, yeah, I think praying for us, giving us money and sending people to us are the three main things that people can help. But also, we're not just there. Again, we're, we're not just there to receive. We're also there to help. So if you're considering planting on a council estate, then get in touch. We'd love to come and help mm. give you advice on uh, what we would do. Again, we're not experts, but we can share usually from our mistakes that we've made in the past so you avoid making the same and, 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 and share where we've had success as well. Uh, but most of all, uh, we, we can just offer... Uh, people just that support of being part of uh, a like-minded network that is, isn't just the same theologically, but the, in a similar mindset, missiologically, having the heart to reach the forgotten places of the UK. And what's the website address so people can check it out? It's www.medhurstministries.org. 
Fantastic. So do check out Medhurst Ministries. Brothers, thanks very much for telling us a bit about the work in ministry. The weekend there was fantastic. I had a great time. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, and hopefully we'll see lots of partnerships uh, growing from Medhurst uh, with other FIC churches, which would be great. And if anyone's at Keswick, come along to the stall. They can <laughs> sign up for our newsletter with a QR code or with the old-fashioned paper application. Get a free Spurgeon mug, key ring and coaster. Fantastic. <laughs> Every chance that by the time this podcast goes out, Keswick has already happened. But brother, <laughs> thanks for the shameless plug. Anyway, it's been Independence the FIC podcast. Thank you, Nathan. Thanks, Ian. Uh, do rate and review the pod and we'll speak to you again soon. God bless. God bless. Bye-bye.